What's up everyone, King Crab's back again today and today we're playing some Mono Bug which is a type I've been um, really looking forward to doing in the Nat decks. I really enjoy Mono Bug and I think there are some really strong Pokemon back um, in the Nat decks that aren't in Generation 8, namely Megas. I feel like Bugs have so much good access to Megas and it's kind of traditionally seen as a, a weaker type or a type that's not very good so hopefully today I can uh, show you that Bug can be small but mighty. So with that let's jump right into the team. So the first member of the team is going to be Caesar, and I think Caesar is a really important member of any bug team. I think bug steel is a very good typing. Obviously it is a uh, doubly weak to fire, which is unfortunate, but we do have things like Araquanid to potentially um, eat fire attacks. But on top of that, it gets stab, technician, bullet punch, which is very, very good for cleaning through things that are like ice types, for cleaning through the rock matchup, which can be uh, very difficult for us. Very, just generally being uh, quite a nice option because its speed is otherwise quite low. We have Swords Dance to increase its bullet punch's power to sky high levels, potentially going for end game sweeps, which is very nice. Uh, you turn to grab momentum, especially if they maybe want to swap into a Magnet Pull Pokemon like uh, Magnezone, we can bait that in, and you turn into something like Buzzwall or Pin and start setting up to get some KOs. Finally we have Dual Wing Beat and I like Dual Wing Beat, its accuracy isn't the best but it is technician boosted so it's 60 times 2 which is uh, pretty nice and the fact that it hits twice means we can break things like Sashes, Sturdy, it can KO things like Volcarona which give my team a lot of trouble uh, so it's generally quite nice. For our stat spread, I've decided to go for a max attack animate nature, just to try and maximize the damage we get from bullet punch and things like dual wing beat, especially after swords dance this becomes uh, very high very fast. We also went for max HP, so I'm going for a slightly bulky Caesar. Because of its steel typing, it can eat a lot of attacks neutrally, uh, which is going to be really good. It's like rock types uh, can give my team a lot of trouble, and Caesar can eat those neutrally. Flying types as well, because of its steel typing. So I do think the uh, max HP does go a long way. I didn't opt for speed because I do have some speed control on the team, namely Pinsir and Yan Mega, and we have web support, so I feel like speed is not the, the most important right now. And the reason I didn't go for a Mega Caesar, I think Mega Caesar is pretty good. However, I think personally the difference between Caesar and Mega Caesar is not as big as the difference between Pinsir and Mega Pinsir. So I'm going to discuss Pinsir right now. So Pinsir is Mega Pinsir even is one of my favorite bug type Pokemon. I think it's insanely, insanely good. Uh, upon Mega Evolving, it gets the ability Aerialate, which pa pairs extremely well with Moxie. So Moxie allows me to raise my attack a stage after I get a KO. So if I can grab a KO before Pinsir Mega Evolves, we can Mega Evolve to a plus one Mega Pinsir, which is going to be extremely extremely strong. We also have Swords Dance to boost my attack even further if I decide to uh, go crazy and get like plus three, plus five uh, attacks, Swords Dance is there to help. Quick Attack is normally not a very strong move. It's okay to take care of a Pokemon with like one HP if they live on Sash or Sturdy or something. I can come in and Quick Attack them and just get that KO to get the Moxie boost. However, when it Mega Evolves, it gets Aerolay boosted, means it becomes Flying Type, Stab, and boosted, I think, by 1.2 times power. So Quick Attack becomes honestly a really, really, really big threat. Frustration is uh, super important, and I suggest using Frustration over Return on Pinsir, because when it Mega Evolves, it becomes a flying type attack. If a Ditto copies you, it can easily reverse sweep your team with a, uh, a Choice Scarf Return. However, Ditto's naturally in Pokemon Showdown will have uh, max happiness by default, so if your opponent does not change that to minimum happiness, Frustration I think only has something really low, it's below 20 base I believe, so it's honestly not going to do too much damage to your team. And finally we have Earthquake, and Earthquake is really good for fire types which can give my team trouble, as well as steel types because they can actually wall out my frustration and quick attack quite well. It can also be nice for things like Toxapex to nab a KO, or just poison types in general which can be dangerous for my team, to try and grab KOs before I uh, Mega Evolve and get my Moxie boost. Stat wise, we're going for max attack, max speed jolly, so uh, Pinsir's speed doesn't look great on paper, it's only base 85, but when it mega evolves it becomes a lot faster, which is very important to outspeed some key threats, and of course his attack gets boosted massively too, um, which is nice, but also we have uh, Swords Dance and Moxie to um, patch up our attack if it's a little on the low side. So next up we have Buzzwall, and if anyone's ever watched any of my bug videos before, they'll know this Buzzwall, this is basically become my signature buzzwall. I use this on basically every bug team I can find because I think it's so so good. So I will explain this odd looking uh, VGC like stat spread in a second but first of all I'm just explain the items were leftovers for longevity. This pairs nicely with substitute. So with substitute and bulk up we can actually become very strong very fast especially in the face of physical attackers who won't be able to break my substitute which is very very important. 
Drain Punch is there for longevity. It's also a very good stab move. It can absolutely tear through steel types, uh, rock types, ice types, normal types. Honestly, so many types just fall to Drain Punch. And it also gives uh, Buzzwall incredible longevity by recovering 50% of the damage dealt, which is very good. Next up, we have Darkest Lariat. And Darkest Lariat is really good for particularly iron defensing Pokemon. Maybe you'll see a Corviknight with iron defense body press. Darkest Lariat does ignore their defense changes, which is super important. Avalog is another example of something who opt in iron defense body presses or uh, double as well, Cotton Guard. So Darkest Lariat is very good for that as well. It just hits uh, ghost types, which Drain Punch cannot, and it hits them super effectively. So generally it's quite a nice coverage move to have. So let me explain this weird looking stat spread. Technically this can be more optimal. I think I optimized it more recently, but this is what I've used in the video. So this is what I'll stick to for today. So the 196 HP uh, puts me at 404, which is exactly enough for my substitute to have 101 HP. And why 101 is important, uh, Nightshade, Seismic Toss, the most damage those moves can do is 100 damage. Therefore my substitute can guarantee live a um, Nightshade or a Seismic Toss with 1 HP, meaning I get a whole extra turn of leftovers recovery and potentially bulking up my opponent's face. This can absolutely mess with things like Chansey because they won't be able to Toxic me behind my substitute. Uh, Ferrothorn can't Leech Seed me. It can set up in so many Pokemon's faces and really, really scare them out. Next up, we have a 176 defense paired with my HP. This is a defense, the special defense that you need to guarantee live your substitute to guarantee live a Scald from Toxapex. So I believe the max damage it can do with a no special attack investment or four special attack investment in Toxapex is 94.8% off the top of my head. So it's essentially like a um, Seismic Toss or Nightshade. It allows me to get extra turns of um, leftover recovery and potentially bulking up in the face of something like Toxapex, which is a very common threat. My 16 speed is important because at 198 we can outspeed things like uh, Nidoking, which can give my team a bit of trouble after a sticky web support from things like Araquanid, so just generally quite a nice speed tier to have. It also outspeeds things like uh, Celesteela, which is very important for me. And finally we have 120 defense. This is just pumped back into defense and has the exact number so that I have um, equal attack and defense. Sorry, with one extra attack than defense. So every time I beast boost, I guarantee you get an attack stage instead of a defense stage. And the reason I want my defense to be as close as possible to my attack is because I want to um, be able to tank things like foul play. Especially if I bulk up, I don't want my attack to get sky high and foul play starting to break my substitutes. So it's important to be able to guarantee live foul plays. Next up we have Araquanid, and Araquanid is going to be my fire check uh, for the team. With Water Bubble, it essentially takes half damage from fire attacks because it's Water Bug type, meaning it normally takes neutral. Water Bubble also halves the damage from fire types moves, so it's essentially taking not very effective damage. It also doubles the power of my water moves, and it can't be burnt. This ability is just crazy. Uh, thankfully it's only on Araquanid because on anything else this could be absolutely broken. We have leftovers for longevity because this is going to be my specially defensive Pokemon. It's pretty much my special tank on the team with max attack, max special defense. It's uh, surprisingly, surprisingly bulky. Um, I, we put four into attack just to make my liquidation slightly stronger. So on paper, liquidation looked like it's going to be extremely weak. I only have 177 attack, but this is doubly powered. So it essentially doubles my stab. So uh, liquidation can be quite strong as well as having a 20% chance to uh, lower my target's defense, which can often force them out. We have Lunge as well to guarantee lower attack. This is good against things like Dragonite, for example, who want to try and Dragon Dance in my face. I can continuously Lunge them and keep their attack down, especially if they're toxic uh, from things like Toxic Armaldo. It can be quite a nice tool. We have Sticky Web, which is generally good team support because my team is a little on the slow side. We do lose to things like Scarfers, so it's important to have that um, kind of aspect of speed control on the team. And finally, we have Magic Bounce, and Magic Bounce is good as an opening to the game. You can bounce back rocks, spikes, toxics, taunts, all sorts of non-attacking moves. If you can read it right, a Raccoon can bounce them back, which can be very good because oftentimes my opponent will open up trying to get Stealth Rocks down, and I can Magic Coat them back and then get Sticky Webs up the next turn. Unfortunately, they often get their rocks down on my side of the field, but that's okay because we do have Armaldo here to clear them off. This is going to be a Battle Armor Heavy Duty Boots Armaldo. So since I made this team, Urshifu Single Strike I believe has been banned, so the uh, battle armor isn't as important, but not being able to be struck by critical hits honestly is always a nice uh, bonus. It can potentially live things like Urshifu Rapid Strike thanks to um, battle armor, because it guarantees the moves cannot crit. 
We have heavy duty boots as well, so ensure this thing can swap in on stealth rocks as much as possible because this is my primary hazard remover. It has rapid spin, which is good because I want to try get up my rocks uh, here and my sticky gloves are Araquanid. So ideally, I don't want to run a defog Pokemon um, because that would remove my sticky webs, which is not ideal for the team. It can You can work with it, but it's not ideal. Uh, so we have Stealth Rocks for team support, Toxic for team support as well, especially good on walls like Mandibuzz, you can give my team a lot of trouble. Uh, Stone Edge is quite nice, especially paired with my Rock Typing, because I will take neutral damage from flying attacks, and Stone Edge can deal super effective stab damage to those flying types that give my team a lot of trouble. Uh, Stat-wise, we are max HP, max defense, so with Battle Armor, this thing can be quite bulky and quite hard to take down from physical attackers, and we pumped just 4 into attack to make my Stone Edge slightly stronger. And last but not least, we have Yan Mega. So this was originally Volcarona, and I know Volcarona is probably a better Pokemon, but I just uploaded my Fire Mono video last week, so I want to try and use Yan Mega instead um, of Volcarona again. And Yan Mega is my favorite bug type Pokemon, so I hope we can put it in work. We're going to run Max Special Attack with a Modest Nature, just to ensure with specs I can hit really, really hard. And my speed tier isn't great, but with speed boost, I do get plus one speed after every turn. You have to ensure your Yan Mega has an uneven amount of HP so it doesn't lose to Stealth Rocks twice coming in. It will survive at 1 HP if I swap it on Stealth Rocks twice. So ideally what I want from Yan Mega is to potentially uh, try and get a KO turn 1 on my opponent who might want to uh, potentially try to set up something in the face of me potentially protecting and not knowing I'm specs which afterwards will give me a speed boost and then Yan Mega becomes quite fast. Moveset wise we have Bug Buzz because my team does actually lack a lot of Bug Stabs so it is important to have some somewhere. It's also sound based meaning it will bypass substitutes which is quite good for me. We have Air Slash which is another good example of a stab move. It could potentially flinch which can make a huge difference in the game and is very good against opposing Bug Teams which my team can honestly kind of struggle with. Giga Drain is there to take care of Rock Types and uh, Water Types. Water is a tough matchup for Bug in my opinion, so having that Giga Drain uh, to give me longevity as well as a super effective hit on Water Types is quite important. And finally we have Psychic, uh, potentially for those Poison Types in the, ma in the tier, which can give Bug a lot of trouble, so it's important to be able to break things like Toxapex, uh, Galarian Weezing, though unfortunately the Slow Twins do give me trouble with Psychic, or give Yan Mega trouble in general. But Nea Mega is still uh, quite an important role in the team uh, because it's just a good late game sweeper. So before I jump into some games, I want to ask you, what is your favorite bug type Pokemon? For me, I said it a few minutes ago and I've been talking about it for the last few minutes. It has to be Yan Mega. I just think it's a really, really cool giant, like prehistoric looking dragonfly. What's not to love? You know, just a really cool Pokemon. So with that, we're going to pause and be right back. So we have a game here against Mono Ground. This is kind of a, a volatile matchup, I suppose, um, especially if they're running something like Sand Rush, Excadrill with Stone Edge, it can be quite dangerous for me. It can be uh, dangerous for me. Garchomp as well often runs Fire Blast, which is scary. I do like things like Araquanid here, especially because Sticky Web will slow their team down, and it looks like the Rapid Spinner, if they have one, is going to be Excadrill, which is quite good. As well, I think Yan Mega's Giga Drain is quite strong here. Uh, there is a few things to tank it, uh, Gliscor, Garchomp, and Excadrill probably won't get O-Code, but it should O-Code Gastrodon, possibly Hippodown and Crocodile as well, and this speed tier is quite nice. So here, I think I'm going to open up the Raconid, assuming they open up with Hippo. So there's not too much Hippo can do against me, and what I'm going to actually do here is Magic Coat to try and bounce the rocks back if they are rocks, if they're toxic. Bouncing their toxic back is very good for me too, so either way, I value that a lot. I guess worst case scenario, they could have um, Earthquaked, but it wouldn't have done too much damage, as it's not very effective. Um, hmm. I value Web Zero, I think. Realistically, I could have stalled out their, um, their Sandstorm by clicking Magic Coat over and over again, but it's not that big a deal for me. I'm going to click Liquidation here to try and get a bit of chip, and if they go into Gastrodon, uh, I do have a few swap-ins. Potentially uh, Caesar or Yan Mega. Yeah, and Mega's a bit dangerous because I am not running heavy duty boots. So obviously it's important I do that. They go to Garchomp. Interesting. I mean, I'll take Chip on Garchomp. That's fine by me. That did a lot of damage. Now, I'm pretty sure Liquidation is not going to kill, so I'm going to lunge once. Just in case they choose to do something like Swords Dance or even Scale Shock. Blowing their attack is very good and it opens up things like Buzzwall actually quite a lot. And Buzzwall, looking at it now, is very strong against their team. 
So they went for Scale Shot, and it is Mega. With the defense drop, actually, Liquidation would have killed, so that was possibly the better play there. Though I guess here, assuming they're not running Fire Blast, what I could do is go into Caesar and set up my, uh, my Swords Dances, but that's quite a bold move. Maybe I shouldn't do that. Honestly, part of me wants to go into Yan Mega here. But I will die if it's a 5-shot, so we'll just liquidate here. Scale Shot shouldn't KO unless they hit 5 times, which they don't. That's good for me. So Liquidation was probably the play there, but if they Swords Danced, it could have been very, very bad for my team. Now the question is, do I value Araquanid that much in the end game? And the answer is no, I don't think so. I think uh, Yan Mega, especially if I can take her of Gliscor, puts a lot of work in. Nice. We live the knockoff. Which is absolutely amazing, because Gliscor was probably one of the other biggest threats to my team. So taking care of that is quite good. Now even if Crocodile is Scarfed, it's not too much of an issue for me. I'm going to lunge here. On the off chance they go into Gastrodon or they try to set up, I actually kind of value lowering their attack. They go for a close combat, which is which is strange. I don't think they have anything to do with Buzzwolf. And I'm going to try to set up a sub in their face. Now, they could be Whirlwind Hippodon. That is an issue for me. Yes, they seem to be Choice Scarf. Which is great, because I get my subs to drop here. And what I'm going to do is bulk up once. I don't think they should stay in. In fact, they might go into Hippodon. The play is probably... It's better to uh, to Drain Punch twice. It's probably the better play. But this forces Hippo down here to Whirlwind. And most of my Pokemon can do at least do something. My Armaldo can Toxic. My Caesar can Dual Wing Beast. Yan Mega can potentially kill with uh, something like Giga Drain. Pinsir is not ideal, so hopefully we're not forced into Pinsir. That did nothing, so that is definitely physically defensive. Oh, they're Earthquake. Are they Slack Off, Earthquake, Stealth Rock, Toxic maybe? Because if they're not Whirlwind, I feel like we win the game here. I'm just going to set up bulk ups in their face. They are slower, so once they break my sub, I can simply sub again. If they had Whirlwind, I think they would have clipped it by now. So I think Buzzwall might just win the game here, as Buzzwall is known to do. Especially because I do outspeed uh, things like Gastrodon, thanks to Sticky Webs. I don't see Excadrill having much to break me. Besides that, Drain Punch will want to KO. So I guess, no, Crocodile can't even KO me, I don't think. I resist both its stabs. It's close combat. Unless this last move is like Fire Fang and it, it broke my sub and then crit me. Then maybe you KO, but even then I'm honestly doubtful. Buzzwall is extremely bulky even before bulk ups. So based on the way my opponent is playing, they're definitely not Whirlwind. Unless for some reason they just wanted to break my substitute first, but that makes no sense. I feel they should have gone for Whirlwind by now, if they run it. So Toxic is their last move. So I'm assuming it's Slack Off, it's Toxic Slack Off. Which means I think Drain Punch should get a pretty clean uh, sweep here. Nice. They give me Excadrill, which is pretty good for me. We'll take that. And with that, we end up at the end of 4.15. And with that, we're going to pause and be right back. So we have a game against an opposing mono bug. Their team does look uh, very threatening. Honestly, Heracross is a big threat, as well as Volcarona. I think I have to keep my Arachnid healthy to do with Volcarona. Otherwise, I'm pretty sure I just straight up lose. Honestly, Pinsir as well. Armaldo can potentially, and Caesar could potentially tank things like Caesar, but it's going to be a very difficult game. They're probably going to open up on Galvantula and try to set their sticky webs down early. And I don't have much of a play against that. We're going to try open Armaldo. Just to try and uh, rapid spin away their, their hazard sticky webs. What we're going to do is actually get Stealth Rock down turn one, which can force them to rapid spin later in the game, which can buy us a turn. Uh, that could be quite good. They T-Wave. Interesting play. I'm glad they didn't uh, Rapid Spin burst. So what we're going to do is Toxic. Or we're not going to Toxic even. We're going to try Toxic here. 
I'm not the most specially defensive, so I will take a lot of damage from Thunder, so it's probably the better play just to try and uh, clear the hazards off my field. That does a surprising amount of damage. 23% is not bad. So what we wanted to do here is kind of force the, uh, the KO. Though unfortunately we don't have anything that outspeeds right away. I think I value Yan Mega later in the game, honestly. But if I take out Yan Mega now, they might go for um, sticky webs here, expecting me to protect turn one. Which lets me get the KO. It won't necessarily sweep, but it does start a pretty good, um, a pretty powerful attack assault here. If I can get rid of um, Armaldo, actually, this can flinch. Potentially, I can just win the game here. They rapid spin, which is very clever. Getting rid of my rocks is uh, is very important for them. Now, unfortunately, this does open me up to things like Pinsir. I'm pretty sure Quick Attack will KO after it Mega Evolves. I could check a damage calc, but honestly, nothing swaps in on this anyway. So we don't necessarily mind the KO there, because it does let us get in things like Caesar and click Dual Wing Beat here. Now, if they go into their own Caesar, it's not great for us. I guess Buzzwall might be the option, but if they're running Dual Wing Beat, which they often are, it can be quite scary. Perfect. They give us chip on, uh, not chip, they give us a lot of damage on the pincer. I'm honestly a bit surprised he didn't KO, personally. Volcarona comes in. I think we always go Araquanid just because we do still value Caesar against our Heracross and potentially their Caesar. Now, unfortunately, their sticky webs means my pincer is going to be slowed down. That did a lot of damage. More than I expected. We're going to liquidate here. I feel like Buzzwall and Caesar are always quite strong in the endgame. They take a Heracross. That did a lot of damage. Buzzwall's the play. I think always. I expected the Stone Age to come out there and it does uh, very little damage. The question is, do I set up a substitute in their face? There's not much point if they're going straight into something like uh, Volcarona. We'll scout. So you're going to sub once into a bulk up. Ah, they crit me with Stone Edge. That's very unfortunate. Hopefully they don't crit here, though it won't KO. It will mean I can't set up a substitute again. Nice. So what we're going to do is uh, bulk up one more time. They missed Stone Edge, which is really, 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 really good for me. Now, unless they're dueling beat Caesar, it puts them in a pretty, pretty bad position. Honestly, I could have stalled out their Stone Age VP and forced them to struggle, but I kind of value just hitting something here really, really strong. If Volcarona comes in, we'll click Darkest Larius. Obviously, my substitute breaks. This should KO. I was going to say, assume we don't get burnt, we're in a very good position. Of course, uh, we do get burnt. Not the worst here. Plus three Buzzwall is still quite good against Caesar. They kind of have to be dueling beat. GG. I don't think they are. If they were dual wing beat, they should have clicked it there. And all I need to do is chip this down to put it in range of my uh, pincer. So that was a pretty tough game. I think we played it relatively well. I'm glad Yen Mega put in at least a small bit of work. And um, that's all I really wanted from it. I just really like Yen Mega. So I wanted to see it do something. And with that, we're going to pause and be right back. So we have a game here against Mono Poison. And I accidentally clicked Yen Mega. That was uh, not intentional. That was a complete accident. I mean, it actually could have worked out here because Yen Mega is a decent start. I was going to say this is a, a quite a threatening game. I definitely have to take care of things like Toxapex um, and Amoongus. Amoongus isn't too bad. I do have Yan Mega. Honestly, Psychic here is good. I'm going to click Air Slash. It unfortunately doesn't Oko, and we do take a Sludge Bomb. That did a lot of damage. We'll Air Slash again. Caesar is pretty good in this game, especially if I manage to Sword Zans up. They go into Slow King, which does very, very little damage. This could potentially be Fire Blast. Uh, with that in mind, I'm not going to go into Caesar. I value rocks a lot in this game, so we're going to try to get those down as early as possible. They're probably defog on something like Weezing. We'll rocks here. Future Sight comes out. I mean, any chip on Slow King is very valued. 
Weezing comes out and is probably going to click Defog or Will-O-Wisp. To that effect, I think a Raquinid is probably the play here. Perfect. So we eat the Will-O-Wisp. That's quite nice. We shouldn't take too much from Future Slice. Now, unfortunately, there's not too much we can do to threaten Weezing, especially because it does have Black Sludge. It's going to recover HP quite fast. Pex comes in. Hmm. I really don't think I value sticky webs all that much against this team they don't really have uh, too much offensive threats buzzwall is really good and maybe actually no nothing outspeeds buzzwall i'm surprised they didn't defog away my hazards it's possible unlikely but possible they do not actually run um defog so this is probably toxic spikes so what we're going to do here is try it and buzzwall hopefully they don't go for toxic personal perfect toxic spikes is okay here we can always rapid spin away with things like Armaldo. Uh, they can't toxic me if I hide behind substitute. And I am specced to live a scald uh, behind my sub against the tox specs. Potentially something like Amoongus could come in, but I honestly don't see Amoongus being able to do too much damage. Weezing can easily break my sub. Oh, that's not good for me. I mean... Drain Punch is slightly stronger. Actually, no, it's quarter by effective. I should have clicked Darkest Larius. Either way, there's very little I can do to uh, Weezing, unfortunately, in this position. Though, honestly, if I get to the position where I can Swords Dance with uh, with Pinsir, I think I just win the game between Earthquake and plus two Frustration. I think the game is mine. So, we're going to go Armaldo here. I thought they'd go for a Will O Wisp personally, so. I didn't really mind Armaldo being toxic. So what we're going to do here, I think, is... Uh, I don't want Pinsir getting toxic spiked either. I feel like my play here is to sack Armaldo. And it's kind of dangerous because it does uh, rely heavily on me being able to kill something like Pex. Before I can toxic spikes in my face. So very good last turn for them to defog away the turn I died to burn. Very clever. And I can't risk being burnt on anything. So I'm going to go into Yan Mega here. And I'm going to click Psychic. Though presumably they go into Slow King Galar as well. It pretty much infinitely eats anything I throw its way. This Pedef drop there is pretty nice. We take those. And honestly, it begs the question. Do I just click Psychic again? Perfect. This can potentially let me get in my pincer, which is what I think I need to win the game. I think if I can just get one sword dance up, the game is mine. Do they run Fire Blast? It, it's very possible they do. I'm going to risk it. And this honestly throws the game if they're Fire Blast. They go into Venusaur. Interesting play, because I outspeed. I'm going to click Frustration here. It catches Weezing if it swaps in. And we get the Moxie boost, which I believe puts me in a position where I win. I don't think they have anything on their team that number one outspeeds me, or number two survives, unless they're Sash. It's unusual to see Sash on Poison, just due to the nature of how bulky it is, so I think this puts me in a very good position. We're a quick Earthquake. The reason I'm not clicking Frustration is because I don't want to get hit by Baneful Bunker, assuming they were. I mean, I'm pretty sure you don't live Frustration. This is plus three, aerial aid boosted. It is seriously, seriously strong. This could be effects for, I suppose. I mean, they should have gone into it earlier if it was effects for, and just hoped to uh, get a status on me. GG. So Pinsir is really, really good for just tearing through a lot of teams, especially if you can position it well and set up a moxie boost like I did earlier. I guess their only play potentially was to go into Muck earlier on, Shadow Sneak me, hope to poison me with Poison Touch, and then outplay my Frustrations and Earthquakes. But there would be a position where I just click Frustration against anything, and it would pretty much KO anything, so I really don't think they had too much of a position there. Unfortunately, because Poison can be very tough for Bug to take down, but thankfully uh, I managed to put Pizinter, uh play it well, and it ended up winning the game. So with that, we're going to pause and be right back.
so we have a game here against uh, Mono Steel. That's going to be a really, really tough game. Uh, Heatrod and Celesteela especially are nightmares for my team. My Stealth Rock isn't going to do too much. Uh, and as well as that, I think Yan Mega is pretty much uh, pretty much useless against them, unfortunately. Maybe I should change Yan Mega to Hidden Power Fire somewhere, just to be able to deal with Steel. Buzzwall is very good, and Pinsir can be quite decent too, especially if set up. So we're going to open up a Raconid here. Expecting them to go for Thorn just so we can Magic Coat. It's decent in this position, I feel. Now they might attack here, which means I'm going to try and set up my my Buzzwall. If they rocks again, that's fine. If they try attack me, I don't think it's going to do too much damage to Buzzwall. As I said, Celesteela is such an issue for my team. It's actually crazy. We'll bulk up once. Skarmory is... Skarmory is scary too, especially if it's Whirlwind. Which is exactly what comes in. So this screams to me, I am Whirlwind Skarmory. We'll get some chip here with Drain Punch. That did okay damage. It dragged in Caesar, which isn't honestly ideal, because I can't do much against this. We'll Swords Dance just in case they decide to go for something like Spikes. Uh, Dual Wing Beast. It's not going to do too much. Actually, with the Chris, that did okay, Chip. Armaldo? Yes, perfect. That's just what you want to see here. So we're going to spin away all these hazards. I don't think we outspeed in this position. Uh, I need to keep it low. And Stone Edge is a decent job. Okay, it's Roost. I am going to struggle to break this thing. This thing is uh, very scary for my team. I mean, I feel like our model of the, our Aquan is the best play. I'm just going to have to try and use Liquidation. Fortunately, they're Brave Bird, which does a ton of damage to me. Okay. Am I in a position where this can KO? Maybe Yan Mega can. With Air Slash. Ooh, that did a lot of damage. So all I need to do is manage to get one flinch. And it potentially puts me in a pretty good position. Nope. They do lose Skarmory. Which is okay for me, I suppose. Now, unfortunately, Celesteela is just ridiculously good against my team. Like, it's not even funny. If we can get a flinch here, that would be ideal. Because every bit of chip counts. Okay, they seem to be the toxic Leech Seed Protect build. Are they Protect? Yes, they are. Is there toxic Leech Seed Protect? If they are Heavy Slam, it means my Buzzwall, I believe, lives one. And I can sub in their face. This is going to be pretty difficult for me. So we get the sub off. With Skarmory dead, it's it's pretty good for me. Actually, this might be a very good position. Assuming they're not dueling beat Caesar. I don't know why they wouldn't be dueling beat Caesar personally. I quite like it. It's good for breaking through subs like this. What I'm going to do here is try and bulk up as much as possible. If their air slash is their final move, it's bad. Okay, they go into Heatran. I will take Heatran from you. I will absolutely take Heatran from you. Magma Storm is fine. This should KO. And I don't see anything that can instantly come out and beat me. As I said, Caesar is probably their best play here. Assuming they're dual wing beast. If not, I always sub in the face of Celesteela and Ferrothorn. Excadrill comes in. I'm going to sub in your face too. Earthquake is going to do nothing. Especially if you're Choice Scarf. Now if you're Swords Dance, it's a little worse for me, for sure. Okay. We're going to Drain Punch here. And I think because of how much I recovered from this Drain Punch and from the plus two, I shouldn't die to do a Wing Beat. Nice. That is a, an unfortunately timed crit for them, but it's very good for me. GG. Buzzwall claims another team. 
honestly, I think the buzz wall is probably one of the best things I created on Pokemon Showdown. It's just the stat spread really, really seems to put in a lot of work. And with that, we're going to pause and be right back. So we have a game here against uh, Mono Dark, which can be pretty good for Bug. Although, honestly, I really don't run that much Bug Stab. Um, U-Turn, Buzz Wall is very, very good here. Uh, Yen Mega could potentially be good too, as well as Araquanid. They don't seem to have any immediate Pokemon that screams, I am um, I'm Stealth Rock. So Araquanid mightn't be the strongest lead unless they lead something like Tyranitar. Because I think I do value Araquanid for things like Greninja. Hmm. We're going to try open a Buzzwall in case they open a Tyranitar. They open a Greninja. So I always go Araquanid here. It's my most um, specially defensive Pokemon, so I should be able to live most things it throws my way. This person is very high up on the ladder. So I'm expecting this team to be really, really tough to duel. I think, again, assuming I can position my Buzzwall correctly and potentially Caesar, uh, Pinsir too, I can do quite well. Oh, nice. Good play to go into Mandibuzz here. I'm going to Magic Coat the Toxic. I'm assuming they're going to go for Toxic here. And uh, getting any damage off on Mandibuzz is quite good for me. They go for Foul Play. Okay. That's good to know. We're going to Sticky Web once. Just to slow things down like uh, Absol, Greninja and Weavile. And presumably now that they know... I am um, sticky web. They're not going to be so keen on trying to toxic me. I was right, I think. They're not too keen to collect toxic here. So what I'm going to do is try to get my Armaldo. I don't particularly mind if this thing's toxic. Hmm. That's toxic once. They U-turn, great play. If they U-turn to something like Muck, uh, that is an amazing read. Otherwise, I can potentially get up my rocks here, which is quite good for me. They go into Greninja. I miss Toxic, unfortunately. Let's go back into Raquanid. Toxic on Greninja wasn't the biggest deal, but it would have been nice, no doubt. I mean, it makes sense not to stay in Mandibuzz in case I click something like Stone Edge. It is Life Orb. Good to know. We'll liquidate here. Nothing on the team particularly likes hopping into liquidate. And it should, I think, KO Greninja. Nice. So I think that was the most important thing on... Um, That was the most important thing, I think, to KO with Araquanid. I feel like there's not too much left it needs to do. Of course, getting up like Sticky Webs would be nice, but it's not essential. I'll lunge here. Just in case they Swords Dance in my face. Now, it's very possible there's something like uh, Psycho Cut. But go into Caesar or in U turn. I think that KOs Absol, and it kind of forces it in Mandibuzz, which I like. They are Rocky Helmets. That is uh, very good information. Their magic bounce now on Absol, so I'm not too keen to click Toxic or Stealth Rock in their face. So we'll just try clicking Stone Edge here. It catches pretty much most things coming in. And I'm not too worried if Tyranitar wants to set up. I can always click uh, Bullet Punch in their face. Ooh, that did a lot of damage. I'm going to try to get rocks up here. If they read this and go into Absol, very, very good play in my opponent's part. They knock off my boots. Are they faster than me? Wow. I did not realize Armaldo was so slow. I think what I'm going to do is rapid spin. Do I rapid spin? No, because I'm not going to outspeed anything after Muck, so we'll stone edge again. We get poisoned, but that's okay with me. Mandibuzz is going to take a decent chunk of damage from swapping in, and that potentially opens up Yanmega in the end game, which is very good. I'm pretty certain Yanmega is not going to be able to KO Tyranitar with Sand, because Sand is just very good. Hmm. 
Weavile could potentially be a threat too. Okay, they've taken Mandibuzz. Do they want to defog away that bad? I mean, I'm going to Stone Edge here because they outspeed me. If they defog, I could have gotten Rocks down again, which is fine for me. They are foul play, so I have to play around this quite carefully. They're going to outspeed me as well by the looks of it. Though I feel like Buzzwall can set up a sub here. They're probably going to try to defog away my rocks. Which is okay for me. I want him faster. Okay, that's uh, great information. Oh yeah, I forgot I invested some speed in Buzzwall. Specifically for reasons like this. So assuming the foul play doesn't OCO my substitute, which it obviously shouldn't. I matched my attack and defense quite closely for reasons as well like this. It does 2 a on my sub, but that's okay. Hmm. I guess I just start setting up more and more bulk ups. If their team is physically offensive, I think Boswell might just win here. They're going to have to rely on some crits as well. And eventually my Drain Punches will start draining HP. So unfortunately, Boswell, it's a little strange to get working. Uh, what I mean by that is, if I do actually KO something else, Beast Boost is going to make my attack much higher than my defense, which means Mandibuzz can actually uh, deal quite a lot of damage to me. So it's almost within my opponent's interest to actually let me KO something else and get Beast Boosted up. We're going to go for a Drain Punch here, just because I am getting quite low on HP. That does a lot. Of course, we do take the Rocky Helmet Chip. Which might force them to Roost soon. Perfect. So this should KO, and I believe I have enough defense to live things like Weavile, Tyranitar, Absol, basically anything they throw my way, assuming they're not specially offensive. I mean, I think they'd have to rely on, like, three triple axle crits with Weavile. And even then, I think Buzzwall is so naturally defensive, I don't even know if that would KO. This is very possibly Focus Sash. So they managed to fade my... My substitute, which is okay. Maybe it was my best interest there to substitute again in their face, but in case they were Swords Dance, it would have been bad for me. For some reason, I feel this is going to be Fire Blast. They play rough, and yeah, it did not enough damage. Even if this was special Tyranitar, and it was like Fire Blast and managed to KO my Buzzwall, I believe between Yan Mega and Caesar, I could still win. GG. So well played my opponent's part, definitely a tough matchup. Um, Things like Buzzwall are, are really, 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 really strong, so I don't blame them for um, finding that one tough. And with that, we're going to pause and be right back. So we have a game against Mono Water, and this th uh, team looks extremely threatening. Rain is uh, very dangerous for me to deal with. I feel like mm, Araquanid and Yen Mega are pretty good here. In fact, I'm going to open up with Yen Mega and try and potentially flinch Pelipper to death turn one. Though if they do open up with something like Sloking, it's quite dangerous for me. Hmm. I really like Giga Drain later in the game, but also I want to try and get rid of Pelipper as early as possible. So yeah, we're going to try open up with Yan Mega. Of course, if they go for Hurricane turn 1, it does kind of mess me up really badly. If they open up Greninja, I can always go Araquanid. I mean, honestly, it, it's kind of a bad play to open up with Yan Mega and just try and get a flinch or crit on Pelipper. Though it potentially does open up things like Pinsir. If I can quick attack after I chip Pelipper and get my Moxie boost, it's actually really, really strong against their team. So maybe it isn't the worst play. 
So I'm going to wait out the timer here and I'm going to pause and be right back. So my opponent ends up uh, not actually playing the game and losing out because of a timer. And just so this isn't a dead match and there's no content, I'll give a quick explanation of what my game plan would have been against a mono water team. So as I said, I would have opened up here with Yan Mega and assuming they opened up a Pelipper, I could have gone for an air slash turn one. Now it wouldn't have KO'd Pelipper outside of a crit or potentially a flinch, which would have been very good for me to dispatch their rain sweeper immediately, the rain center immediately. If they swapped into something like Sloking, uh, we do potentially have Caesar who could come in and U-turn and try grab momentum that way. If they have Greninja in, we can always go into something like a Raquinid. Armaldo wasn't too useful in this game, but could potentially live a hurricane from Spex Kingdra and Toxic Dash put it on a timer. Now the most important tool in my arsenal I think in this particular matchup is Pinsir. If I could chip damage things like Pelipper, Pinsir potentially could have come in and uh, gotten a plus one thanks to Moxie, which really threatens their team and forces them to go into something faster like uh, Kingdra and the Rain or potentially Greninja, both of which either Armaldo or Araquanid can swap in on. And then Buzzwall could have been set up later in the game against things like Swampert and potentially Azumarill if it's the Whirlpool Toxic Parasong set. So uh, just a kind of quick rundown of what I would have done. It is a very tough matchup, but of course there is a lot of RNG and, and uh, playing based on my opponent's plays and stuff. It's just an idea of what could have uh, what could have done. So with that, we're going to pause and be right back. So that is going to be it from Mono Bug for today. Overall, I'm pretty happy how I performed. I don't think I dropped a single game since I started recording. Granted, it's a shorter life than usual. I decided not to push my luck. Uh, we ended up number 14 on the ladder, which isn't, you know, amazing because it is not Dex. It's a, it's a quieter ladder than a lot of other ladders, but it's still cool to see a type that's traditionally seen as quite poor perform quite well in a monotype setting. Overall, I really like the team. I think the Nat Dex really adds some useful tools to the bugs. I think the uh, access to Megas they have is super, super important, especially personally. I like Mega Pinsir the most, though Mega um, Caesar and Mega Heracross can be very good too, especially I've seen a Tailwind Mega Heracross team going around with Tailwind support from a uh, Prankster Illumise, and it was really, really cool. So uh, definitely some really interesting things Bug can do. Of course, I have to give a special shout out to Buzzwall for being an absolute monster on the team. This thing is consistently performing well for me on basically every team I ever use it on. I'm quite happy with the stat spread I designed. Uh, it just really performs. I'm happy to see Yan Mega put in some work. Probably wasn't the best. It originally replaced uh, Volcarona, which is probably a better Pokemon on Mono Bug, but Yan Mega is one of my favorite Bug Pokemon, so I really wanted to see it uh, perform some work. So with that, if you did enjoy, leaving a like, uh, sharing this video with a friend, uh, a comment or subscribe helps me out so much as a small creator. It does go, not go unnoticed. I really appreciate the effort people put in leaving a like or a comment or even making this far in the video. I really, really do appreciate uh, anyone who's here. Anyone who's clicked the video at all, much appreciated as a small creator. It goes a long way for me and really makes my day to see comments come in on these videos. And with that, I hope I'll see you next time. Hopefully next Thursday, um, I'll have another live out. It might be a OM. I've recorded this before the OM is announced for October, so we'll see what that is. I want to do a meta discussion quite soon, so I'm working on that video. Uh, so hopefully you can tune into that. And I'll catch you next time, guys. Take care. Have a great day.